Hey everybody, this is Mike with On Point Preparedness. I was going to do some other videos in addition to this. There's been a lot of stuff going on in the news, especially if you've taken a look at France. But I've had some equipment issues, and I think, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully they've gotten figured out by now. If my audio drops for any reason, by, by all means, please just tell me in the chat, because that is what is getting a little bit glitchy. But uh, in today, we're going to talk about something that has been blowing up my Facebook messages and, and pretty much all the social media messages that I receive. And that is the Sound of Freedom movie, uh, which is starring Jim Caviezel. It is, uh, you, you probably know as well on your social media feeds that it is just being shared like crazy. And it seems as though the primary audience is Christians. And so I want to look at this and show you why I believe this is actually not the not the movie in and of itself is a deception, but I believe this movie is part of many tools that the enemy is going to be using for a very big and great and broad delusion and deception. Now this is this is a really touchy subject. Uh, I'm not afraid to go after it because there's again I said this is one of many tools that the enemy is using to try to bring about this great delusion if we look at lots of other issues and lots of other movies I believe our spiritual enemy is using moralism as a way to snare Christians to be unequally yoked with the world so I've done a video I'll link it later in the YouTube description box about what moralism is. If you actually look it up as well, moralism is, is really just about if you're a moral person, you know, it seems like you're heaven bound. Uh, people that don't really even know the gospel of Jesus Christ. As long as you're moral, you know, you have a good feeling about yourself that you're going the right way. Actually, when I was a former Catholic and I, I left Catholicism because I realized that it's not the true gospel, uh, that was one of my beliefs. You know, I just thought, well, I'm a good person. You know, I'm moral, I'm going to go to heaven. And so what the enemy is doing is he's painting this very black and white picture for the world. There's the totalitarian, tyrannical elite, uh, this secret cabal, these people like in the movie Sound of Freedom, they're involved in these child rings, these ped rings. Um, they're the ones that are locking people up in, in their homes in the lockdowns and everything else like that. Uh, they're the ones that are stealing our wealth. You know, you just go on and on and on. Very, very blatant types of evil. The left woke agenda. And he's saying, those are the people that are bad. The, that is the true devil. But if you fight against those things, you're God's children. And so he's painting this very black and white picture. And it's, it's really not that. Because the people that are acting moral and are acting righteous are not in Christ Jesus either. But yet they are convincing true believers in Christ or infants in Christ or people who are on the fence to get yoked up with them. And it's a very, very dangerous thing. And so I'll explain all of that here. But again, Sound of Freedom is just one of many tools the enemy is using to create this delusion. And it's very, very touchy. Remember, our enemy is cunning. And he's, <laughs> you know, the Bible says specifically that, you know, do not take him as a slouch. Do not do not think that um, you know you've got it all figured out. Like he's very very sly in his approach. And so what he's doing is on issues of like abortion, on movies such as The Chosen, movies such as Jesus Revolution, movies such as Sound of Freedom. I mean, in all these cases, and I'll, I'll do a little bit of each one. You know, abortion, of course, like. Christians should say that abortion is wrong. Um, if people want to, you know, try to stand by abortion clinics and lead people to Christ and convince them not to abort their babies, those are all good things. I'm not saying that Christians shouldn't be engaged in that whatsoever. The problem becomes is when abortion is raised up on this political pedestal and Christians start to engage in organizations and with people and they actually start to have interfaith prayer because it's not just Christians that are against abortion I mean other faiths as well are against abortion and so Christians will actually start praying with other faiths they'll be praying with other denominations of Christianity that have false gospels and so they're 
there is the real danger, at least for the, the like abortion topic. For the chosen, we're not going to cover this at nauseum because I've already done it before. <laughs> that is full of um, you know people that are involved in Mormonism. Uh, it's it it has a lot of um, people that are engaged in New Age and Catholicism. So you know outside of the movie itself, and and by all means, there's there's things sneaking into the movie that are unbiblical as well. But all these figureheads and all the popular people out of the Chosen. They are running their own sideshows, and all the fan base are following them, and they're actually leading people to believe in destructive heresies. Uh, it's it's very similar to the the Jesus Revolution movie, which also has uh, Jonathan Rui or Rumi or, or whatever his last name is. So again, these all these things are leading Christians to follow people that don't have the true Jesus. They have a false Jesus. And these people are very much talking and preaching about how we need to take down the tyrannical elite. So again, this very black and white, oh, the, the tyrannical people, they're evil, but if you're against them, you're righteous. So let's look at how the Sound of Freedom movie plays into this, because it is extreme when you actually start digging. So full disclosure, you know, I haven't seen the movie, and I said before, the movie in and of itself is not a bad thing to watch. This ped rings and child rings, I think they do exist. I'm not saying that they don't exist. Uh, I, I, it's, it's horrible to even think of, right? We don't even want to contemplate these things. Um, so if you wanted to go see the movie just for the movie's sake, you know, I'm not saying that that's wrong. But what I see, again, is this overwhelming trend of people gravitating to the people that are publicizing this and promoting this movie, and those people are very dangerous. And unfortunately, they're getting lots of publicity, lots and lots of it. So let's take a look and show you some of the things that I've dug up here. So, Sound of Freedom, it's not just a select theaters type of movie that's just minuscule. Um, if you check this from ABC News, scroll down here, the movie has proven to be an unexpected box office hit since its release. The movie had an opening day gross of $14.2 million and then went on to earn another $18.2 million over its first weekend. It held the second spot at the July 12 box office, trailing behind only Tom Cruise's Mission Impossible. Um, that's So again, this is not just a little thing. This is a very big movie, and that's probably why I definitely have seen it all over social media, and perhaps you have as well. Uh, this is being promoted by Angel Studios, uh, which we're not going to get into them, but just to show you the gravity of this as well, for any of you that are on Twitter, 71.7 million views of this particular tweet. That is that is huge. We're, we're talking about a lot of eyes consuming this material and being um, subjected to people like Jim Caviezel, Tim Ballard, um, Mel Gibson, which we'll, we'll get to in a second here. I don't want to cover Tim Ballard a lot. You know, this is uh, he's the person who was. Um, this is the movie, it was based off of him, based off of a true story. Uh, but he's actually Mormon. And if you look at some of the things that he's teaching, and he's going around on all the shows, right? So he's you know talking about Christian-esque Christian -esque stuff in addition to this movie. Um, and it's, it's Mormonism, which is a false gospel if you actually look into the true beliefs of Mormonism. And just for example, uh, my friend Aaron shared this. This is him on the Joseph Smith Foundation website, Mor or YouTube channel, Mormon YouTube channel. And this is where uh, a lot of Mormons, including himself, are defending the occult symbols and Freemasonry and why inverted pentagrams on the LDS Mormon temples is not, actually not a bad thing. So I was, if you want to look this up, you can. Um, here's the title. You can screenshot that or come back later. Um, but uh, for the, about the first about the first minute here, this is all him talking about how 
there were certain symbols and occult knowledge that the ancient Israelites and Jesus Christ himself taught and that these were somehow passed through um, perhaps to the Masons and he talks about how the fraternity type of Masonry today is not what Masonry used to be and how you know Masonry had deep roots in a lot of these symbols that again ancient Israelites Jesus Christ and the Apostles knew about so again it's it's very, very bad stuff. And you'll see that him and like everyone surrounding this movie is dangerous spiritually. They're posing as servants of righteousness, but when you actually look into their beliefs and look at what they're promoting, they're, they're not. They're actually false gospels. Uh, here's Glenn Beck, who is also Mormon. And you can see here, he is one of the um, people that has funded uh, in some way, shape, or form, this movie and help to get it up off the ground. So this has been floating around social media. I don't know um, to what degree he funded it, but it says media personality Glenn Beck raised the funds so that Tim Ballard could quit his job and rescue children in Columbia. Beck's pivotal role was part of the original Sound of Freedom script. So again, Glenn Beck is probably high up in the Mormon church. Um, Tim Ballard likely as well. Probably no accident that the two got joined together. But again, we see we see Mormonism in the uh, a lot of the people that produce the Chosen. Uh, we see them here, and again, the movies themselves may not be the exact issue, but they're going around all these uh, right wing um, talk shows and saying much more things about the faith and and leading people to believe that they're like some type of, or, or to follow them and, and to follow what they have to say. Let's look a little bit more. Jason Shurka. So just, uh, if you look at his channel, he says, I am grateful to be an executive producer on this powerful film that's going to help wake up the world very fast to one of many truths humanity must become aware of. Okay. So this is the executive producer of the show. Uh, if we look at him, and let me bring, oh, actually, one second here. Here they are. Thought I had them up, but let's open them up right now. Jason Shurka. We did it. This is what happens when we come together and stand up for truth. We, the people, united in truth, love, and light. So many of you who think about light workers. Uh, that is a terminology that's frequently associated with new age principles. Um, you know, being a light worker, uh, collective consciousness, things like that. Uh, if you if you don't think that's uh, orienting us towards, you know, what his beliefs are, there's some additional screenshots again, thanks to Lydia and Aaron, uh, some of my friends who provided these. Jason Circa on his website, Unified. Uh, let's see here. The Well, let's just do this one first. Jason Shurka. Each of us holds the power to break free from the illusion of control and become the sovereign creator of our reality. So again, that um, that is really a statement. Um, and again, it, it follows the idea of lightworkers and consciousness and you know things that are essentially like new age principles. And we're going to empower ourselves to take our power back, illuminate the truth, and awaken humanity through awareness. So again, it's just, you have to, you have to really look at the trends. You know, The Chosen, extremely viral and popular film. Sound of Freedom, extremely popular now. Uh, Jesus Revolution, um, it had its moment. I don't think it was as popular as these past two, but again, just all these people, it's its like, it's just circulating around this thing. And you have to see the spiritual trend that's going on here. Uh, it, it's very much caked in New Age. It's very much caked in uh, different um, denominations of Christianity that have false gospels. Um, let's see. Yeah, let's just skip this one. So basically, that's Jason Shurka. All right, let's look at the next thing that I got here for you. Jim Caviezel. So obviously the main star of this, and he's pretty much the one going on all the talk show hosts. I've covered him a whole bunch of times. 
but for the sake of people who don't really know who he is and why he's spiritually dangerous, uh, I figure I'll just touch on him just a little bit. So, Jim Caviezel is Catholic, and he is very much a supporter of orienting people to Mary as the co-redeemer and the the co-mediatrix. So actually listen to what he has to say here. This is in line with Catholic doctrine. So if you don't know, you know, why Catholicism is a false gospel, uh, if you look at their beliefs towards Mary, they'll say, oh no, we still believe in Jesus as our savior and our redeemer and our mediator. But they say Mary was sinless. Mary was the co-redeemer. Mary, they say, is the mediator of all graces. I mean, really, really blasphemous types of things. And he says it here in these clips. So let's just have a listen real quick. This will be about a minute. 1827. In the final scene, Mary becomes a living Pieta, holding the dead body of her divine son. She looks to us all as our loving co-redemptrix who suffered in union with Jesus. So she suffered, and she's a co-redeemer. That's what he said calls us all to appreciate the price of our redemption. There are a lot of deep theological truths that Mel Gibson wove into the passion of the Christ. In this chaotic, confused age, ladies and gentlemen, we need truth. And it is true that Mary is the co-redemptrix, mediatrix of all graces. There. She is the co-redemptrix, which means co-redeemer. She's, it's almost putting her equal with Jesus. And she is the mediatrix or mediator of all graces. Let me just back it up. She's the co-redemptrix, mediatrix of all graces, and advocate for all humanity. It is my hope, it is my prayer, that the Pope Pope will proclaim proclaim this this truth truth as a Marian dogma, dogma, so that that every every single single living human human being will know that they they have have a spiritual spiritual mother that loves them them, and who will intercede intercede to bring bring them. them. So she's the intercessor. I mean, you see, this, this is just really, really bad. But, I mean, at the core of Catholic doctrine, I mean, I think it was Pope John Paul II, I mean, this is... This is in Catholic doctrine. This isn't just Jim Caviezel going on a wild card here and saying these things. I mean, there are liturgies by the popes which say these things. Mary as the co-redeemer. Mary as the co-redemptrix. Mary as the um, mediatrix of all graces. Where the Bible says man only has one mediator between him and God. And that's Jesus. And it also says there is only one God, but there is one mediator between man and God nothing about Jesus. So you can sort of see again, he has a false gospel. But let's go further. In addition to just the Catholicism, uh, mainstream media will bash Jim Caviezel as being Q, Anon. Uh, This, I might just play just a snippet of this, but this is him at, uh, I forget which speech he gave this at, but he starts to embody Braveheart in this speech, talking about how people need to fight against the tyrannical forces, regain their freedom, um, and he quotes the famous Q phrase, "The storm is coming." Actually, let's just um, let's just skip this because it's 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 more comical than anything. He almost actually starts to put on like a, an Irish accent as he embodies the whole Braveheart theme. But again, he's he's very much in Q, and. Uh, what, why I wanted to skip this is I'll show you a video where he actually equates anons to Christians, saying that the persecuted anons are essentially like the persecuted Christians. So, again, this is from, from Newsweek, and again, m- mainstream media likes to bash him, uh, and for good reason. And when you watch it, it's actually sort of true. Uh, emulates Braveheart speech, cheering to crowd at, and I don't know if this was a specific Q convention, um, but still, he's using the catchphrases. Uh, in some of the videos that I'll share here in a minute, you'll see that he like outright calls um, Q anons like good people and that he's defending them. 
So here's that video. This is only about a minute long. So let's 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 check this out here. One sec. So listen, and we don't have time to go into everything Q. I've done tons of video on videos on it. It's total new age movement. It's it really is, um, and you can do some research yourself if you haven't really looked into it. But listen to what Jim Caviezel has to say. One could, One could say, say that, that they're, they're also, also racist, racist, but they don't, they go, don't after go after those. those. Only, Only the QAnon. QAnon. Now, now, if, if I, I, by way of analogy, but one if, I were, yep. Yep. if I were if I an apostle uh, uh, Saul, Saul, and I'm a Pharisee, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go, go after the Christians, Christians. I'm, gonna I'm gonna take them, them down. down. Now, now remove Christians and let's make it QAnon. There. So he, again, he's bringing out these Christian ideas of Pharisees persecuting the apostles, persecuting Jesus. And he's like, why? It's because they have the truth. And so now substitute Christians with QAnon. Look who's getting persecuted. Let's, let's listen on. I'm going, I'm going to, destroy to destroy them because, because the, the Romans, Romans told me they're, they're evil. evil. I'm, going, I'm going, going to destroy, destroy them because, because my, my own church, church staff, staff, my, my Pharisee, Pharisee, fellow Pharisees, Pharisee said evil. evil. I'm going to I'm take them out. out. And then, and find, then, find, then you then find out it's not QAnon, it's Q. And anons. And, anons. and, and Q, Q puts, puts out a question, question. And, you're and you're not allowed, allowed to, ask to ask questions, questions anymore. anymore. Not, allowed not allowed to. to. And the and anons, anons, they, they look it all up. up. And, and, they and they start, start looking, looking and investigating, investigating this stuff. stuff. I, never I never knew about them, them while I was, was doing this movie, this movie Sound of Freedom. Freedom. It has nothing to do with our film. It's really interesting that they... Now, I think that's very much a lie. Because again, he was quoting a lot of the Q quotes and everything way before this movie. I mean, I, again, I've done videos on Jim Caviezel. He's been doing this for years, so that's an outright lie. Hey, pointed, pointed to this, this immediately, immediately and said, that, that guy's, guy's one of them, he's bad. bad. I'll, I'll tell you the rest, rest after, after that. that. Right. Jim, we have to have you back, back soon. soon. I'm sorry, sorry we're, we're out of time. time. But so this is the type of thing, right? So Charlie Kirk, and I've covered Charlie Kirk as well. He, he puts on you know Christian-esque type of political show and reaches lots of people. And he's having these folks on, right? Tim Ballard, Jim Caviezel, or, or Glenn Beck has these people on. It's not just the movie, right? There, there is way more to this. The, the movie is just a tool. The movie is a tool for people to be aware of this very evil thing that's happening. And it's giving these people who are not Christians by definition of the true gospel, it's giving them a voice, that for one. And number two, I do believe at some point there's going to be a major exposure that these types of ped rings and things are happening at a very high level, and it's going to completely outrage um, people. And you know, who do you think are going to be the leaders of you know taking these people down or or the voice? to all the moral people who want to take these people down. It's going to be people like Jim Caviezel. Um, and it's it ties into this whole um, rebellion that I believe is spoken of in the Bible, the, the global rebellion. Uh, again, if you haven't seen that video, it's my Second Thessalonians chapter 2 Restrain and Revealed video, which I, I feel very strongly about. Uh, let's keep going here. Another channel. We'll just have a quick listen. Only a minute. I have a I really, really hard, hard time believing that, that we are not living, living through some type of mass awakening. awakening. When you have, you have Jim Caviezel on the Steve, Steve Bannon show, show saying, saying things, things like this from his incredible movie, The Sound of Freedom, freedom. you've you got, got to check this out. We're supposed to go along with the LGBTQ community. Where's our pope? Why is he not speaking out when poor Catholics are being ripped to kingdom come from the FBI? These are the things that are going on in there. It's like a tentacle, octopus with arms. Many, many, many arms, arms but you got to go, go after the head, head of the octopus, octopus in this one. one. Who is it? The central banks, the IMF, the ECB, the, ECB, the private West central, central banks, the Fizz, the, the Rothschild banks. banks. We have a Rothschild Pope, Pope, and there, and there are, are great Americans, Americans out there that are fighting, fighting right, now, right now, fighting, fighting with, with all their, their hearts, hearts, but they, they, they don't have a voice. I'll be that voice. I saw what John the Baptist did. I think about him all the time in this situation. Would you lose your head for Christ? Would you? I would, because I love. So now he's comparing himself to John the Baptist, but I want to, I want to point out a couple key things that he said here you know i used to be in the camp where i believe that mystery babylon truly was the roman catholic church there was a lot of scripture which seemed like one for one um 
you know, prophesying that the Roman Catholic Church was going to be like the end times religion. But I'm I'm no longer thinking that. Honestly, I think this this harlot, this this religion of the end times, I think it is going to be something new. It's going to be something blended. Uh, honestly, with what he said here, he's saying, you know, we have a Rothschild Pope. What you see happening around Roman Catholicism is people getting increasingly infuriated with the Marxist leftist woke Pope and all the, and this ties into the Sound of Freedom movie, all the priests and what they're doing to children and getting caught and how they're just, you know, a priest gets caught and they sort of shuffle the priest around to a different country into a different diocese or whatever lots of people are starting to see the corruption of the Catholic Church. And so one of the New Age beliefs is that humanity is controlled by the elites in a multitude of different ways. They're controlled, obviously, by uh, central banking, all the things that Jim... I, I used to love to talk about this stuff. I mean, that was that was what my channel was back in the day. It's all trutherism stuff. And now I see how the devil is sort of using this to get people to rebel against government, and, and it may actually be playing part of the end times. But um, all these things, uh, controlling your money, controlling your wealth, controlling property, but you know, New Age also believes that religions also control people, having people divided against one another, uh, you know, I honestly wonder if, you know, at some point uh, that will sort of be realized and, um, you know, religions will sort of just bind together uh, because they're, they're sort of self-imploding. Uh, if humanity gets to a state of where they're starting to lose hope uh, and, and they see like horrendous things starts to be exposed... I think some people generally start to move away from faith just because of a, a loss of hope. And I think something new is going to sprout up. Again, that's just an opinion. But again, just want to highlight that I used to be in the camp of thinking that uh, Roman Catholicism, as it stands today, was going to be a big part of the end times. I, I think the people that are in Roman Catholicism are going to have parts to play, but I don't think Roman Catholicism as we know it today is, is going to have a part in the end times where, where people like all start to flood into Roman Catholic leaders and the Pope and the Cardinals and things like that. I think something new is coming. And I think Roman Catholicism honestly may be destroyed in the process. All right. Anywho, again, showing how popular this, popular, the, ugh, sorry, popular this is, and also start to tie in some other people like Mel Gibson and Trump. So this is um, Dana, it's Dana White, right? Yeah, Dana White. He's one of the announcers of, um, yeah, buddy, I'm Dana Dana oops, sorry, uh, of the UFC. And so him and others are <laughs> announcing the sound of freedom and, and using their platform so that people go watch it. And this is another reason why it's so viral. But have a listen to what he has to say, and then we'll look at some articles here. Hey, everybody, I'm Dana White. There's a new movie, There's a new movie out, movie out called, called The Sound, sound of freedom. freedom, and it's, and it's about, about human, human trafficking. trafficking. More importantly, the trafficking of children. This is a disgusting, horrific issue that's happening all around the world. And it's not getting better, it's getting worse. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give any of my UFC employees that want to see this movie free tickets to go see. And I would like to encourage other executives to do the same at their company. Here's Mel Gibson with some more information on The Sound of Freedom. One of the most disturbing problems in our world today is human trafficking and particularly with the trafficking of children. Now, the first step in eradicating this crime is awareness. Go see Sound of Freedom. All right, so looking at this article. President Trump holds meeting with Mel Gibson and Roger Stone after Sound of Freedom tops box office. Uh, this comes right after he met with them at the UFC 290 on Saturday night in Las Vegas. And so you see here, they're sort of tying this article in with uh, Dana White and what he had to say. So again, this, birds of a feather flock together. That's essentially what I'm saying here. Trump and everyone that surrounded him, you know, Gibson, Jim Caviezel, Jonathan Rumi, um, you know, all the right-wing people uh, like, um, Sean Foyt, uh, and Let Us Worship, and oh geez, the list just goes on and on and on. You know, these people are all bound by a common cause with a bunch of different like side shoots to them. 
but they're all bound by the common cause of there is a very evil elite that is ruling not just the United States government, but all governments. And here's all the evil types of things that they're doing. And they, they all want to take it down. And they, they all want to restore law and order. And I think, again, at some point, things are going to get bad. Really bad things are going to get exposed. And I think that people are going to rebel against government thinking that it's a righteous thing to do when the Bible actually tells us that it is actually in rebellion to God to do such a thing because God uses evil governments to enact judgment on evil nations, which is where we are at. This is where the world is at. You, know, you wonder why we've got totalitarian evil leaders pretty much all around the world? It's because the whole world is evil and they are enacting God's judgment on people. And people don't like that, and they want to rebel. So, you know, if you think about it spiritually that way, things start to make a lot more sense. It's not just thinking about things just in the flesh, like, oh, you know, these evil people are against God. If we just take them out, then we're doing God, we're doing a godly thing. We're doing something positive for God, but it's it's not really the case. All right. Mel Gibson. This is on EWTN. In a recent interview with Mel Gibson, Christianity Today referred to Gibson as a traditionalist Catholic who likes the Tridentine Latin Mass and calls Mary co-redemptrix. There's also another well-known Catholic who also calls the mother of Jesus the co-redemptrix. His name is Pope John Paul II, and he's done so on six occasions during his pontificate. And then I just wanted to highlight this just to show you how Catholics excuse these terms uh, what does co-redemptrix mean? From a Catholic perspective, it refers to Mary's unique human participation with Jesus and entirely subordinate to her divine son. So shes they're saying, no, Mary is subordinate to her son too, even though there's literal statues and idols which people kneel down and pray to, even though there are prayers to Mary, even though they say that She's the mediatrix of all graces, of all graces. That does not seem like she's subordinate to her son. Or even if you look at the idols of Mary, what do you typically see? You see Mary, strong, standing tall, and what is Jesus? He's a helpless baby. She's holding the helpless baby. You know, it, it's all focused on Mary. Um, anyways, she's entirely subordinate to her divine son. In the historic work of saving humanity from sin, Jesus is the only redeemer in the sense that he is alone as the one divine mediator between God and man who could uh, redeem or buy back humanity, uh, humanity from the bonds of Satan and sin. And even that, um, you know, really he's, he's saving us from God's wrath. It's this, this, phrase also starts to get into some weird beliefs where Satan is holding humanity hostage and uh, that you know Jesus had to sacrifice himself to Satan you know, in order to get humanity back. Okay, so just weird stuff that they're talking about here. Um, but God willed that the mother of Jesus participate in this redemptive process like no other creature. So again, they, you know, it definitely does not follow the Bible, what they're doing. It is definitely a false gospel. But with any false form of Christianity, they're going to have excuses. They're going to have rationalization on why they say or do certain things. But you can pretty much tell that this is false. It's, it doesn't hold water. All right. I want to cover just a couple more things here. I don't think I'm going to play this. But one of the other things which is making this movie so popular is that it's being talked about everywhere. And, you know, the media starts to say things like, don't watch this movie, you know, it's bad, and here's all the reasons why it's bad, and what is what does that sort of make people want to do? Especially when there's a lot of this distrust of the media. It makes people want to see it. It's almost like parents telling their kids, do not touch the red button, and that just really makes them want to touch the red button. That's exactly what's happening here. You know, all across mainstream media, they're saying, hey, this film is crazy. It's all Q stuff. Uh, Jim Caviezel is out of his mind. And you know, people are like, hmm, I sort of want to see what's going on here. So these things are just, you know, 
they're just giving this whole movement more and more steam. Uh, it's almost like the whole, and I hate to say the word, if you remember Jeffrey E. Island and everything there, uh, there was certain pizzerias. Uh, one one that has a particular name, I, I know I'll definitely get this video taken down if I start saying all that stuff. But um, mainstream media did a lot of that as well with that. They kept on talking about it and this, this crazy conspiracy. And what did it do? It made people say like, I'm, I'm gonna start Googling this. What it, you know? What is all this stuff about? And it's like the frog boiling in the pot. People over many, many years are being subjected to a variety of different quote unquote truths of elite corruption. And you wonder when there's gonna be a big exposure or when there's gonna be a critical mass of people that are, are finally aware of these types of things. Uh, one of the examples that I gave some of my friends is, you know, you have to you have to think this is interesting here, but think about some of the most horrendous events that have happened, you know, in our history in in the recent past. Like um, I don't know the exact date, but you remember what happened in Vegas with that guy that went to the top of uh, one of those hotels and then unloaded on everyone. I mean that unreal, and it stayed in the news for maybe about you know three, four months, maybe six months, and then it went away. And we hardly talk about it anymore. But for some reason, Jeffrey E. Island and his accomplices, that was sometime around early 2019. And it's almost like every single month there's articles still about him. And you got to wonder why. Like why, why after like four years are we still talking about him? And it's just like new revelations about, okay, now it's his accomplice, we're gonna focus on her. And then, oh, there's gonna be some unsealed documents talking about who his clientele were. And again, it's just like a frog simmering in a pot of water. The story just never goes away. And I believe spiritually it's by design, uh, along with things like Sound of Freedom and other things coming out to, to make people aware of what's going on uh, behind the scenes of a lot of these you know elite. Now, there's some side voices also. Now, not everyone that shares this movie is bad, obviously, but I just wanna show you you know, what's surrounding this thing spiritually. There's a lot of bad people um, that are promoting this video and starting to become figureheads of this movement. And then there's some that are less well-known, but still uh, just as dangerous. And I really just wanna show these examples to show you what the Bible talks about when it says that, you know, do not be deceived you know, the peop um, Satan's followers cloak themselves and, and look like servants of righteousness. Um, you know, some people just can't tell. And so here's uh, Henry, Pastor Henry Hildebrandt in Canada. I'm Pastor let's Henry have, Hildebrandt. Thank God for nice. nice. Let's hear what he has to say real quick here, and then I want to show you, you know, what he's all about. I'm Pastor, I'm Pastor Henry, Henry Hildebrandt. Hildebrandt. Thank, Thank God, God for a nice, nice sunny, sunny day. day. Inside, Inside I, feel I feel torn off. off. I, feel I feel very, very, very troubled. troubled. I just, I just came, came back, back from watching, watching the, the new movie, movie that just came, came out, out, The Sound, Sound of Freedom. Of Freedom. Absolutely, Absolutely tremendous. tremendous. Absolutely tremendous. Um, looking, looking at, at what, what is, is happening, happening it's, it's one, one thing, thing if you make, thing a, movie you make a movie of something, of something that, that happened 50, 50 years, years ago. Everybody, everybody wants, wants to see that. that. But, but no wonder there was such opposition, maybe there or still is so much opposition right now, of that film actually making it to the public. Took about, took about five, five years, years I hear, by the time they finally were able, able to put it out. out. But it but is it out is now, and we're, and we're seeing, seeing it. it. For, those For those of you that are concerned, would you even want to uh, uh, support the film industry? Would you, would you even, even want the theater, theater to make some money from it? From it? From it? Let, me Let me tell you tell something. something. If they, if they wanted, wanted to make money with it, they would like to advertise it. As you can tell, they won't even have it on the sign. Nobody knows unless you found out somehow that they were showing it. So nothing is being shown, nothing is being said about it. But, but we're, we're seeing, seeing it, it and, and as I as said I in the past, past, the reconciliation of all time, of all things has come, come it, is it is our, our time. time. Child, Child trafficking, trafficking is a major, major, major issue. issue. It, it is, is a $150 billion, billion, billion dollar industry, industry. And, the and the United States of America, States of America is, is the, the number, number one consumer. consumer. So he goes on to say, and he, he has a lot of these slogans, you know, God's children are not for sale. Um, and, you know, he again, he's he's seems like a nice older gentleman 
Uh, he's obviously talking about something that is horrendous and should be taken down and should be exposed. But here's more about Henry Hildebrand. Let me just play about seven or eight seconds here of his church, uh, the Church of God, uh, Church of God Restoration. There is this YouTube channel called Church of God Restoration Cult, which has a lot of detailed information. But him and his family have been in trouble with the law several times. And in terms of their beliefs, way out there. Uh, have a quick listen to this, and I'll play one more video about their beliefs. I am, by God's grace, a John the Baptist. Because if I was as mean as a snake, you still have to call me to go to heaven. Not long from now, everyone will know the apostles of the Church of God. He's smarter than you are. If he don't say it, we don't believe it. Because leaving the Church of God is being prostituted. This is the salvation message. If you want to be saved, all you got to do is agree with us. So they all believe that they're apostles. They believe that their words um, are actually divine and can be used as scripture. But here, here's another pastor, and he, he gets a little bit more in detail about you know who who's the head of this church and links it back to Henry Hildebrandt. Let's just have a, a quick minute listen as well. Again, they have a false gospel, and some people are even calling them a cult. Yet, if you were to only see things like this, it, it seems like, wow, the Church of God is really, not just the Church of God restoration, but holistically, wow, Christians are really standing up for something. The Church of God is coming together. There's a big move of God. We need to stop this thing, et cetera, et cetera. But again, it, it is all part of, of a deception that we need to be very careful about. Let's have a listen here. Henry Hildebrand is a greater threat to the church than Justin Trudeau. Okay. Or Doug Ford. He's a greater threat to the church than Justin Trudeau or Doug Ford. Now, I've, I've thought about this a long time. And I've actually meant for Henry to talk to him about this. But I'm going to just read to you again some of the things that have come out of that group. Because I want you to hear me. This is a major problem. And if he gets embedded and too cozy with people that we trust, he is going to bring so much shame to the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, the true church. He calls himself an apostle and he answers to a head apostle by the name of Ray Tinsman, who's based out of the United States, and he's the head apostle of Hildebrand's group called the Church of God. Ray Tinsman admits publicly, I have a, 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 I linked in the evil this week on our Facebook and Twitter page to Steve Richardson's blog on this. It's excellent, you should read it. Ray Tinsman admits publicly, this is from Steve Richardson's blog where he sourced it all, that they are brainwashing people. He admits publicly that he and the other apostles can write scripture. He admits, he says publicly that praying to Jesus is weird. Now, one of the apostles, apostles in this group preached a sermon about Ray Tinsman. And in that sermon, you hear that the apostle preaching owes his life, soul, and salvation to Ray Tinsman. So you get the idea, right? You got to look into these things. And hey, you know what? While we're here, let's, let's look at the comments under uh, Henry, Pastor Henry Hildebrandt's tweet here. Let's see. God bless you. Oh wait, maybe it was. Uh, let's see. Um, you know what? Maybe it wasn't Pastor Hildebrand. Maybe it was. Oh shoot. Oh, I wish I, I didn't lose this, but it was under one of these videos, basically, just to show you the deception that Christians are under. Almost every Christian was talking, or almost every comment seemed like it was coming from a Christian and saying, this is a big move of God, it's a great awakening, uh, you know, you are truly anointed for making and bringing this, uh, this, this movie out to all of us. And it's really heartbreaking just to see how proliferative uh, the deception is. And so, I, again, I think it was... Uh, let me just do a quick round through my tabs here. Yeah, maybe I maybe I closed it. But, anywho, yeah, if you go through any of these talk show hosts and um, that are talking about this movie and you look through the comments, it's pretty bad. Lastly, you know, I talked about J.P. Sears, uh, and you know, a lot of people are saying J.P. Sears has come to Christianity, but I was warning, you know, that he has relationships with uh, the creator of the Plandemic movie, who has a lot of um, New Age philosophies on his page and things like that. Um, but again, he's 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 in this camp as well. You know, he's all about the Great Awakening, awaken with J.P. 
And again, it's like birds of a feather flock together. And the, the big thing is these are big voices. These are all very, very big voices. And they're all sort of providing the same type of messaging. So that's all I really had for you guys today. Again, it's a very, it's a very, very touchy subject. Because, you know, some people are like, should I just not talk about it? You know, should we should we not expose this type of thing? Because it's definitely evil, and I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying you need to be as wise as serpents, um, but you know, peaceful as doves. You need to you need to know what's happening spiritually behind the scenes here, and be careful of what you say and share. So, yes, Christians should stand against abortion, um, but not just stand against abortion for abortion's sake, but also you know teach try to try to lead people to the gospel um, and you know that their hearts will be changed so that they they don't pursue abortions uh, regarding these pet rings and the child stuff um, should Christians speak out about that should they donate to organizations that try to stop this you know I would say yeah it's not that we just completely retract however we have to see how the enemy is using something that is you know has righteous intent but is putting it in the hands of very, very evil people to drive a particular agenda. And so my advice is, if you really wanna educate people on what's happening with trafficking, do you really need this movie in order to do that? Probably not, you know? Do you really need to share the Chosen movie to communicate Jesus? You really don't need that. Um, and you have to think about if you share these things, what might happen afterwards with the people that consume that material? It's possible that might nothing might happen. They might just go see the movie, say, oh, wow. Um, yeah, that really opened my eyes to things that are happening here and don't really think much about it afterwards. Or uh, can potentially yoke them up with you know, all these people and things that they're talking about. So again, we just have to be very, very wise uh, with what we say and share about all these things. And they're viral for a reason. And it's definitely picking up steam over the last couple of years. So uh, with that, you know, maybe I will get another video out this week because it seems like my audio still was uh, doing fine. Uh, may talk about, you know, just everything that was happening in France over the last couple of weeks. It, the, whole, the whole place was almost like on fire. Um, and then I uh, got maybe one other topic for you. So... Uh, this is Mike with On Point Preparedness. God bless everybody. I'll see you later.